Hey, Port Plate Count and Round 1 at Eddie Ad. It's Sunday night footy. One of their guns is Chris Sharon. And Round 1 last year, Bone, you're right, remember. Count v Richmond, MCG, 90,000. Have a listen to this. Handball could be Yaron. Runs all the way from half back to half forward. Takes them on. Should have had a bounce. Does have a bounce. Just in time. Oh, he's run around another. He's run inside 50. A bloody goal of the year. Oh, goal in the first. Goal. First game. But can you believe it? Uh, <laughs> how are you, Chris? Very well, thanks, guys. Does that give you goosebumps? Uh, yeah, it does, certainly. Um, brings back good memories uh, from two years ago now. So um, hopefully I can replicate something like that uh, this Sunday. That's your signature move, I reckon, that run and carry. Is that your favourite spot, doing it from half back? Yeah, I think so. I've um, I've been pretty comfortable back down there um, the last two years, certainly when, you know, when Rat said, you know, during pre-season, you know, three years ago now, that he's going to play me to half-back. And ever since then, I haven't looked back. So, really enjoying the role. Chris, it looks like it's been a pretty challenging pre-season for Carlton. And, you know, there's been some injury concerns. We know the story with Chris Judd. Things don't appear to have gone perfectly from the outside. What's it from the inside? Yeah, it's um, obviously had a few injuries um, throughout the pre-season. But, um, you know, Judd is out for another couple of weeks and... Um, I think Andrew Crouch is going to miss for another couple of weeks as well. But um, other than that, we're all looking pretty good. Um, went to Arizona last uh, November, and the boys slugged it out pretty well for two weeks. Um, yeah, altitude training, we think it's benefit um, to us throughout the year so far. So I just got to try and get in um, this Sunday and hopefully, you know, give Port Adelaide a, a lesson or two. Okay. Chris Rowe was talking before about the the list right throughout the competition and how many injuries there are at the moment. We know the Crows are looking like being without eight of their best 22 for their game against Geelong, and that's not for another week yet. Um, we spoke about Chris Judd. We know he's not going to play, but apart from Juddy, how healthy is your list? Uh, very, yeah, like I said before, we're all, um, you know, besides Juddy and Andrew Carrad, so you guys might be aware of. Yeah. Um, um, I think we're all looking pretty well at the moment. Um, you know, a few blokes had a few niggles here and there. Um, but, you know, from what I gather, the last, well, certainly today's training session, we'll, um, you know, we're, besides those two, we're all looking pretty healthy. So, touch wood, that, that carries on throughout the year. I don't want to call you Satanta's little helper. What's your nickname, Chris? <laughs> oh, I get called Yaz a lot. Okay. Um, throughout the footy club, so you can call me Yaz. That's no yes, drama. okay, because I, I like nicknames, Yaz, so yeah. we'll, we'll roll from <laughs> there. Hey, you're closing in on 100 AFL games. You're confident you now know what it takes to perform at a really high AFL level? Because as I said before, one of the most talented players on any list, you were sub a couple of times last year, got a bit of a, a kick in the guts by me. Oh, jeez, what's happened? Chris? Yes, 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 you're there. Oh, he's fallen. Oh. Yes, you're right. Oh, <laughs> something's happening, Yaz. As soon as wanted you wanted to get another, no, another lot, oh, he's dropped out. As soon as you called him Yaz. He told me to call him Yaz. Well, Only told me to call him Yaz. No, he said his nickname you was Yaz. What? You know, here's the thing. Here's the damn thing. We can put a billion dollar <laughs> rover on Mars. We can put man on moon. We but... can do all these amazing things. But you think you can get a damn phone to hook up us with Yes? We got him back. Yes. <laughs> yep, I'm back. Mate, are you Sorry okay? You sound like you fell somewhere. <laughs> I think it was just a line of miscommunication. Oh, That's right. Oh, back dear. oh, yes, we need you Sunday, mate. <laughs> hey, um, I don't know whether you got all the questions, but you are closing in on 100 games. Are you confident yep. now on what it takes to perform at a high level in the AFL? Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, this is my sixth year coming into the system now, so... Um, yeah, I'm almost, like you said, reaching 100 now. So, you know, that's my mini goal throughout the year to, to crack that 100. I'm not too sure what I'm on now, but... Um, 83. 83. Oh, okay, there we go. So, um, yeah, hopefully I can can crack it this year and, you know, it'd be a wonderful achievement for myself. How are you enjoying, so. enjoying Mick, Chris? Because I reckon he's going to be great for you, Mick Malthouse. Yeah. I, um, you know, had a little communication with him last year, but, um, yeah, he's settling very well. He's obviously brought in a few Collingwood with play um, this year and um, and our new high performance manager in, in Dave Butterson. So um, he's going to be great, not just only for me, but for the rest of the club. He's, uh, you know, his game style is, you know, can't really speak too much of his coaching here because it speaks for itself. He's won a lot of premierships and you know, he's a wonderful coach. So I'm just really looking forward to working with him throughout this year and, and more, many more years to come. So can't mm. wait. We had a text message straight away from a Carlton fan, Rowie. It's 84 games. You've robbed him. Yeah, sorry about oh, there that. there we go. Hey, That's your little right. your little mate, Jeff Garlett, is equal number one favourite with Mick Malthouse with Daisy. Now, is Jeff happy yep. to share Mick with Daisy? Yeah, 
I think so, yeah. Oh, good. I've had a, um, <laughs> you know, Daisy was his pet at Collingwood, so um, it's going to take a little bit of understanding from Jeff to take a backward step now that Daisy's in. So, um, yeah, they're going to share a kicking um, duty together throughout the warm-up throughout good. every game this year. So <laughs> it should be interesting. I tell you what, your forward line looks all right with Daisy in and, and Jeffy Garland up there. Everett comes in. He's been fantastic pre-season. If you can get weight and cruiser fit, your front six looks pretty uh, pretty imposing. Yeah, it does, certainly. And you're throwing Lockie Anderson down there as well. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty, pretty, uh, you know, pretty important, uh, and dangerous forward line for the rest of the competition to handle. So we can just get enough football down there so they guys can go to work and, you know, get the scoreboard for us. It'd be fantastic for our supporters, I guess. So it should be good. Chris, I left one name out there. Uh, my apologies. And he's a kid that we love the look of when he can get on the park. Uh, something special about him, Troy Menzel. Tell us about him. Yeah, he, um, he's had a fantastic, um, Pre-season, he's uh, he showed glimpses of it in the in that NAB series this year. Obviously, a South Australian boy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if he if his knees holds up, I think he's going to be a fantastic player. So um, I have no doubt that he's going to be set for a big year because he's you know he's running as good as anyone at our footy club. So um, you know, hopefully he can stay injury free and um, set a you know early early on in the season get a, a few goals and a few tackles in the side four fifty be be great for us. Yes, yeah. yeah. Coaches have been scouting Port Adelaide. What do you think their strengths are? Uh, well, they've got great, a great midfield in, in Boak and, and Ebert and obviously Wingard. So if we can nullify their, um, their midfield, I think it'll go a long way from us winning this week. But in saying that, they've got a lot of, um, you yeah, know, a lot of damaging players that can hurt you up forward, like, uh, you know, Schultz. Um, he's as good as anyone going around the game at the moment. So we're certainly going to have our hands cut out. And they you know, look at last year's round 23 game. We, we've just got over the line by a point. So. We expect nothing less this week, and hopefully we can uh, get a similar result, but a lot easier. So um, we'll see how we go. They're small forwards as well. Um, Gray, Wingard, Monfries, who will you normally line up on, do you think? Well, uh, at this stage, I haven't really had a look at uh, my direct opponent, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Gray or, or maybe even Wingard if he spends a bit of time down there. So uh, probably my, mainly those two, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll see how we go. You're missing little Eddie. You missing your little cobber, little Eddie Betts? Yeah, he's uh, obviously going to miss him this year, but um, I think it was you know, probably best if one of us left because it was pretty much me, him and Jeffy fighting for two spots. So, um, yeah, there's no doubt I've been good friends with him over the last six years, so um, certainly I'm going to miss him, but, you know, I wish him all the best, except against us, of course, but I've no doubt he's going to be a terrific player for him for the next four years. So. Round 10, May the 25th. <laughs> Carlton play Worlds the collide. Crows, and you could be standing your little cobber Eddie Betts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I could be. Um, hopefully that's the case. But um, yeah, you know, now these days there's so many you know people that plan it for this time of year and um, these yeah you know, these games. So any one of myself, Walk, Simo, or, or Zach Tui can can match up on him. So well, uh, because he's such a dangerous player, you can't just normally just set one guy to him. So you got to just keep rotating it. The strike, and hopefully, uh, you know, we can get it done when we play against them. So. Chris, tell us about life at Carlton. A lot of Carlton fans over here in South Australia. We know the, the Kernahan connection that's still there at Carlton. So uh, it is a very popular club uh, this side of your border. Um, 150 years it's been around. There are celebrations and acknowledgements of previous eras. Uh, and there are probably plenty of your fans saying, you know what, it's about time uh, that another premiership came to this football club because there's been a little bit of a drought. So um, is, there, is there pressure on? I mean, do you feel that as a player? Um, not at all, not to be honest. Um, you know, we're just about improving every year and, okay. um, you know, everyone strives for their premiership, but, you know, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication to get there. So, you know, it's easier said than done, but, yep. um, you know, we're certainly about improving this year and, and hopefully, you know, fingers crossed we can get there, but, you know, if not, uh, we'll just pack up our things and, and work harder for next preseason. Mm-hmm. But, um, all, all has gone well so far, so, um, we're just about improving this year, like I said, and, and see how far it takes us. What do you need to do better? I mean, is it just keeping quality players on the park? Is there part of your game that you've you've really drilled down on over the pre-season that you want to improve on? Is there one specific thing? Yeah, well, like you said, you know, it's just about, you know, getting everybody healthy and okay. um, keeping everybody on the park because, you know, if you if you get a little bit of luck with injuries and you get your good players out there on a, on a regular basis, I think it really helps your, your team going forward. And, um, you yeah, know, we've got the right right coaching panel and and the right players to, to get us there but we just got to all gel together and, and hopefully like I said before we can improve on last year's 
result and you know, get one step, two steps further. Yeah, as you're a West Aussie, you grew up with Nick Nat Nui. Is your mate ever going to play again? Uh, I hope so. Um, I think it's just, you know, it's, it's always good to see him back out there on the park because he's such an exciting player to watch. Isn't he ever? Um, but, uh, yeah, I hope he does because he's had a shocking run with injuries the last mm. year or so and I wish him all the best. But um, from what I gather and what I hear from, from over that side of the town, I think he's uh, he's done well and he should be stepped for round one. So, oh, good. Across from him. He's going to be the next million-dollar man, too, which is great. Hey, Yaz, Carlton have unveiled a Heritage Guernsey today as part of their celebrations for the Blues' 150th year. So it's yep. in the Carlton shop online as we speak on the Carlton website, carlton.com.au. Now, when other teams have a Heritage jumper, you think, well, OK, that is a little bit different. But yours yep. is still Davy Blue with the Carlton member <laughs> smack on the front. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, nothing really a... Heritage about it, Yaz. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, what can I say? I'm not very, very good in that department, so I'll just let, leave that to the guys that, um, you know, creating all those jumpers and fancy jumpers. So we'll just worry about getting myself back on the park, you know, hopefully winning a thing game. Hey, Chris, before we let you go, there's a couple of new faces that are really interesting at your footy club. Andre's Everett, we've spoken about and going to be a quality player. Tell yep. us about the extractor, young Patrick Cripps. Yeah, from, uh, from what I've seen so far, he, he's an inside midfielder mm. that, um, you know, puts his body on the line week in, week out, and um, I have no doubt that he's going to play a debut, debut for us this year, and, you know, hopefully he can, you know, just like anyone else, injury-free, and, and get some, you know, good, consistent footing under his belt, but we don't want to put too much pressure on a young kid coming in, um, certainly at this level, because we know how hard it is to play this game, so, um, you know, He's going so well so far, so hopefully he can keep it up. You're a fan of Dylan Buckley's. We've seen a little bit of him, and uh, we know what Dad used to play like, and he was a caucus. So um, yeah. you're wrapped for him? Yeah, very wrapped with him. He's uh, he's another one that's had a big pre-season, and uh, you know, hopefully he can get some you know, quality strings, some good games together this year and, and make himself an AFL player. So he's certainly got the talent and the, and the traits to do so. So hopefully he can follow in you know, his father's footsteps, and you know, we, are, we know how... Great. He was a, oh, a yeah. player, so. He was a beauty. Yeah, hey, yeah. Yaz, have a great season, mate. You're such an exciting player to watch. I, I see a lot of Andrew McLeod and you, how you float across the turf. You look like you do it effortlessly. <laughs> you, you bounce the ball. You carry. You can hit targets. You're closing in on 100. I think you've got a lot more than that in you, mate. Have a great thanks, year and mate. thanks for I your time. I appreciate it. Well done. Good morning, Chris. A ripping fella. Chris Yaron there. Port Play Carlton, round one, Eddie at it. Sunday night. Watch this bloke from half Elite. back. Oh, of course he is. And, and Carlton, they've got their 150th year celebrations. It's at the Carlton shop online. Get on on their website and have a look at their jumper. Buy it. It's a ripper. Carlton.com.au. Yes. Yes. Our new mate, Chris Yaron. Carlton okay. star.